Welcome to the Vault XL. It said commentary inspired Bakersfield.com. West trial, defense says improper questioning of children resulted in false answers about adopted parents. Inside of this article, you will see a picture of Ms. Stallings, who's representing Jacqueline West. They do not have cameras in this trial, but you will see the two, the couple sitting at the defense table while she gave her opening statements. A lack of forensic evidence, no confessions, and faulty interview techniques will lead jurors to acquit two parents of killing their adopted toddlers. A defense attorney said Monday in her opening statements after the prosecution rested its case. Alexia Torres Stallings elected to postpone her opening statements until after the prosecution rested. She defends Jacqueline West, the wife of co-defendant Trizel West, and began her opening statements by looking at jurors and quietly painting a cheerful, cozy scene unfolding two years ago in December before it shattered with the disappearance of Orrin 4, Orson 3. Trizel and Jacqueline West have pleaded not guilty to two counts of second-degree murder, an involuntary manslaughter charge, conspiracy, willful cruelty to a child, and falsely reporting an emergency in the deaths of Orrin and Orson West. Prosecutor Eric Smith has said the toddlers died three months before the West reported them missing in December of 2020, and their bodies have never been found. Jacqueline West, 33, was wrapping Christmas presents in her new California city home, December 21st, 2020, Trizel West, 36, had gone to a lot neighboring their backyard to collect wood to get a fire started. That's when their adoptive children were kidnapped, Torres Stalling said. Their two youngest children were taken, Torres Stalling said of Trizel and Jacqueline, but their four oldest children were taken by the system. The West has six children in total, including Orrin and Orson West. There is one witness to the alleged killings of Orrin and Orson, a then 10-year-old son who divulged Orrin died while the West lived in Bakersfield. Before moving to California City, Orrin was choking and vomiting before he died, and then 10-year-old son told uh, forensic interviewers. This time, excuse me, this same child said he heard a sound like a soap bottle falling in the bathroom at the California City home after moving there, and he never saw Orson again. The child is now 12 years old and testified in this case. Coercive interview techniques planted false information in this child. Torres Stallings added, she will call upon social workers and a forensic interviewer handling the West case to show there was never an unbiased approach when questioning the kids. She noted, a skewed perspective results in the improper questions asked to kids, which results in getting misinformation, Torres Stallings said. Clinical psychologist Susan Napolitano will be called to testify about the improper questioning techniques used in this case, Torres Stallings said. At the conclusion of this case, Torres Stalin said a tragedy still remains. The outstanding question of where the boys are will be will still be remaining, she said. It's unclear if the defendants will testify on their own behalf that wasn't addressed in Torres, Torres Stalin's remarks. Testimony. A forensic interviewer who questioned a then 10-year-old boy had multiple influences affecting what questions she asked this child. Defense attorneys attempted to establish through their questions. He told her of touching Orrin's dead body in Bakersfield and never seeing Orson again after hearing a sound like a soap bottle falling in the bathroom of the California City House. There is a different technique when questioning children in a criminal investigation rather than adults. Forensic interviewer Sonia Barton, who questioned the now 12-year-old son, testified Monday. That's because young children are particularly impressionable and therefore open-ended questions must be asked to draw out correct information. It's important a forensic interviewer have an open mind, she testified. Given the sensitive nature of the children's testimony against their own parents, the Californian is withholding their names at this time. Barton interviewed the then 10-year-old son two times on December 22, 2020, and once on December 28, 2020. Defense lawyers sought to recreate what Barton knew prior to her third interview on December 28. In interviews that happened on December 22nd, one of which was played for the jury, the son doesn't ever mention anything about Orrin or Orson dying. On December 22nd, Barton testified the now 12-year-old son was withholding information and protecting his parents. The boy told Barton his brothers uh, were exaggerating about any spanking Trizel did, which caused bleeding. Let's say, repeat that again. The boy told Barton his brothers were exaggerating 
about any spanking Trezell did, which caused bleeding. A prior interview with the West, other child said Trezell spanked him with a belt tip in metal, which caused bleeding. On December 22nd, Barton testified the now 12-year-old was minimizing what truly happened and protecting his parents. Timothy Hennessy, defending Trezell West, then established what Barton did prior to her third interview on December 28th. Barton testified she watched Trezell and Jacqueline give an interview to news reporters outside their California city home and felt both were lying. She testified she sent links from Facebook about this case to another social worker. This social worker tested, texted Barton that everything she was reading on Facebook isn't true, Barton testified. And Barton testified she thought there weren't any presents for Orrin Orson that Jacqueline was rapping on December 21st, 2020. When the FBI questioned fingerprints of Orrin and Orson, Barton testified that's because she thought the boys were dead. How many bodies of three and four-year-old can they have, Barton wrote in text to a social worker. Barton also testified she never discussed with the social worker handling this case that the boys may have been kidnapped. Testimony is scheduled to continue on Tuesday. Bakersfield.com is the source. So we have Ms. Torres, who's defending Jacqueline, basically saying the questioning technique done uh, by the officials toward the children were not proper and that obviously they were misleading. Basically saying that one testimony that the young boy gave had no bearing on Trezell abusing the children. Let me get this correct. Um, it said the child was talked to two times on the 22nd and the 28th. Defense lawyers sought to recreate what Bart knew prior to her third interview on December 28th. Uh, there was a change in the young boy's testimony. Perhaps he was trying to protect his parents. So let's ask that question then, the older child who is testifying. Has he not told the entire truth in court and also in his rendering two or so years ago? Did he lie about anything. The parents beating the kids, not beating the kids. What is the truth? Did he see Orrin choking and vomiting? As he told forensic interviewers. The fact that he heard a sound that sounded like soap falling in the bathroom at the California City home and then later Orson was never seen again. That's just his opinion. Nobody said it's facts. Because if he didn't see anything, and he didn't say in court that he saw another child sickly or deceased after hearing the soap bottle fall, then he's just giving his opinion. I don't know what to think at this point. I don't like to say the children are lying because I can't see what a child is going to gain by saying they saw a child sickly, uh, cold to the touch, looking pale. Why would a child make that up? Because you have to understand the situation that this child and other children were in. They're being taken from their parent. They're probably were scared out of their wits. But then down the road, he realized whatever he told would be incriminating towards his parents. And now that he's had time to think, grow, probably misses his brothers, his parents, he, dealt, he does not want them to continue to stay in prison and, pro and possibly wants to be reunited with them but they're not a good fit for him or the other children. And that's the thing about being a child. You don't know what is best for you. And the West are not best for anybody. They're not even good for each other. And it does not matter if they ever abuse their own biological children. The point is two children are missing. They are deemed deceased. And obviously the state is going by this 